Welcome to the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health's monthly magazine, Meeting of the Minds. I'm Karen Zarsidias. In this month's Mental Health Minute, this year the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health, also known as DMH, will continue its efforts to build permanent supportive housing for the county's homeless and mentally ill clients. The communities are a partnership with several county agencies, contractors, and mental health providers. They'll provide residents with mental health resources, medical assistance, and help for finding jobs. In 2004, California voters passed Prop 63, also known as the Mental Health Services Act, or MHSA. It's because of MHSA that millions of dollars have been invested into the construction of more than 30 housing communities throughout the county. So far, a third of them have already been built, providing homes for several hundred families and individuals. In other news, living happily, that's the goal for many people. We've got tips from mental health experts on how to lower stress levels and boost your happiness. First, get healthy, so watch what you eat. Get some exercise and sleep well. Also, don't forget about your mental health too, because your overall well-being is important to being happy. Next, find peace. Your stress levels can drop when you do whatever works for you. Try prayer, meditation, yoga, or just plain quiet time. These are all positive mood enhancers. And lastly, reach out to your family and friends. Why not spend quality time with your family and friends? You'll build a strong support network, and that contributes to a happier, healthier life. Hope, wellness, and recovery is our department's motto. With more about what DMH is up to, here's a message from our director, Dr. Marvin Southern. Thank you, Karen. I wanted to talk to you today about something that Los Angeles County is doing better than almost any other jurisdiction in the United States. Because of the leadership of the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors and the resources made available by the Mental Health Services Act, the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health has, in the last five years, created partnerships with cities and developers that have leveraged over $436 million of private, local, state, and federal funding to create 1,576 units of housing, of which 727 are earmarked for persons with mental illness. There are 33 projects in various stages of development and nine projects that are completed and fully occupied. You might wonder, why is a mental health department so invested in creating housing? There's really only one answer, and that is, it works. We have learned and the evidence shows that the creation of permanent places to live for persons who used to be homeless because of their mental illness is the best and most cost-effective way of helping these individuals achieve recovery. After all, how much can medication and psychotherapy do to improve your life if you are living under a freeway bridge? And if you are camping out in the cold, how likely is it that you will be taking good care of your diabetes or other health problem? No, it's very clear that permanent housing with the right supports is an excellent investment. I am very proud of the dedicated staff within the Department of Mental Health that formed the partnerships that made this kind of human investment possible. Thank you, Dr. Southard. We like to share stories and tips on wellness and recovery on this show. With more about this in our Walk the Talk segment, here's Kathleen Pache. Thanks, Karen, and welcome to Walk the Talk. Today, my guest is Maricela Estrada. Maricela Estrada believes that being diagnosed with bipolar disorder has been a gift that has made her stronger. Maricela's mission is to reach out, share her story, and spread a message of hope. She has written a memoir of her experiences entitled Bipolar Girl, My Psychotic Self. She blogs and speaks publicly on mental health issues and the stigma associated with getting help. We're talking to Maricela today about how she has coped on the road to recovery, how she maintains wellness, and about her plans for the future. Welcome, Maricela, to Walk the Talk. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you for having me. I know that you grew up in East L.A. and had a very hard time since you were five years old right. when you became depressed and at 14 became suicidal. Can you tell us a little bit about how you handled that? Well, I had depression since, like you said, 
since I was five years old. Since I was in kindergarten, I had this ongoing depression. By the time I got to high to middle school and high school, it just unraveled and became horrible and worse. And my cope, my only coping strategy at the time was overdosing. So oh, no. that led to my first initial suicide attempt and at age 14. How did your family handle what was going on with you? They really didn't understand what was going on. They were, my mom didn't really necessarily understand depression or where this all came from. She didn't realize how bad my depression was until I overdosed. And so because that was so difficult, how, how did you finally get help and accept help? Well, it wasn't until I had my first psychotic break. And that was after, it was right after high school. I was 18 years old and I just became very delusional. I thought that I was a chosen one, that I was a prophet, I would walk around seeing, I was hyper-religious, I had the Bible, and my family became concerned, but they didn't really understand what psychosis was. My family's from a small ranch in Mexico, so they didn't really understand, so they took me to see a shaman at first, and the shaman told my family that it was psychiatric, so my brother took me to Cerritos College Hospital, and that's where I was diagnosed mm -hmm. with bipolar with psychotic features. Tell me how um, you ha humor plays into your recovery. Oh my, that's a huge, huge part of my recovery because I've had so many delusions, embarrassing delusions in public and parking lots. And um, I just learned to laugh about it because if I just go on my whole life just embarrassed and ashamed and I feel stigmatized, like my illness is taking control of my whole life, I, I've learned over the years that I have to laugh about it and I have to have a good sense of humor about it. I had this very embarrassing delusion which was in front of my partner that I was with at the time. Um, we got in an argument, a little quarrel, and I started getting a lot of anxiety and then it just unraveled into this horrible delusion where I thought it was Britney Spears. I thought it was Britney Spears, Paris Hilton, and Mariah Carey all in the same day. So I was jumping around, wow, dancing. that's a lot to handle. <laughs> I know, right? And I was jumping on the bed saying like, you can be Britney too. And it was really embarrassing and it wasn't that long ago, it was in 2008. So it took me a long time before I was able to talk about it and laugh about it. But now that I, I reflect, I'm able to completely laugh about it. Like it's hilarious, I thought it was Britney Spears. How has having bipolar disorder made you stronger? Oh, it's made me so much stronger. I don't think I would be the person that I am today if I didn't have bipolar. And I think it's a huge blessing and I just see it as a gift. In my book, I call it a gift of challenge because it challenges my life every day. I, you know, I encounter depression or mood swings or mania or delusions, but it's made me overall a better person, stronger, more resilient, more compassionate. And I think that if it wasn't for my mental illness, I wouldn't be in this field because now I want to give back and I want that's, to help people. That's excellent. Yeah. What can you tell others about seeking help when they have behavioral problems? I think that as soon as they notice something that something is wrong, especially in you know in, in their teens or if you're really young, you really need to get they really need to get help. There's so, we have so many resources and we have NAMI, we have DMH, right. we have the access line. You know, there's help. And studies have shown that the sooner you get help, the better your outcome is. Right. So it's really important to get help as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maricela. You're an inspiration and definitely walking the talk. We look forward to your future success and you're writing a new book called Beautiful Bipolar Bisexual. Look forward to that. And we're going back to Karen. Thank you, Kathleen. And that's the show for this month's edition of Meeting of the Minds. To learn more about the Department of Mental Health and for more information about DMH's programs and resources, you can always visit the website anytime at dmh.lacounty.gov. You can also follow us on our Facebook page and watch our Profiles of Hope videos and PSAs on YouTube. Just search for the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health or LAC DMH. And if you or someone you know is in need of help, you can call our 24-7 access line at 1-800-854-7771. That's 1-800-854-7771. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.